Does that sound all right? Thank you. Yes. Let's see, April 24th, 1 p.m. Now, Ms. Badger, we're going to have a document for you to take to probation and parole to let them know that you need to have a PSI done and for them to interview you for that. So just um, have a seat out in the audience and we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. May we excuse you? Sure. Have a good day. You too. Do you want the uh, originals from that last plea agreement, the originals? It's just up to you if you want them in the Okay. I don't know if you want some. No, Ms. Thatcher is waiting for a PSI paper, but that's all that. You just put it all on the record. Oh, what? On Boston? No, on Stevie Thatcher. Yeah. As soon as she did a plea, she just needs to go get a PSI done. I thought it was an item. Stevie Thatcher. I just put the file in the landing area. Thank you. Do me a favor. Let me see pull. Let me see pull right there. Judge, this one gets a little complicated. Thank you. All right. We are on the record in 24 CR 136, Commonwealth versus Paul Corbin. Mr. Adams is here for the Commonwealth. This is a rocket docket case. Mr. Corbin is present. He is in custody. He had been represented by Clay Kennedy. Mr. Schaus, would you like to address the court? Yes, ma'am. Judge, what, what's happened here is that Mr. Corbin filled out plea sheets. Those are his signature, the, Mr. Kennedy's signature, uh, Mr. Adams' signature. Those plea sheets were gone over and were signed, but they've never been gone over by any court. No judge has ever gone through those plea sheets with Mr. Corbin. That's supposed to happen today. Instead, we would like to withdraw those documents uh, and get a trial date. I spoke with Mr. Adams before we went on the record. He said that the Commonwealth will almost, well, not almost, they will certainly go back and indict him. I was willing to waive the information, waive the indictment, go with the information, but the Commonwealth wants to indict him. So um, that whatever continuance you think is appropriate, ma'am. Oh, and I guess actually the case might not wind up back in this division if we go back and That's indict. exactly right. Well, what I would do is remand it to district court, I'm assuming. Mind or? No. No? Okay. What we will Tell do me. is, uh, <coughs> yeah. What I would ask to do is uh, bond remain the same, pass this out six weeks to two months. In the interim, we will directly indict it. And I don't know the history of this case. I don't know if there were other charges that were dewopped or anything in relation to this agreement. Uh, but just, I'm sure everyone knows, but we. If we go back to indict directly, we will add any and all charges right, right. that were dewopped as part of this agreement. And procedurally, I think Mr. Adams is correct. As soon as he began talking, I realized, no, that is the answer. The answer is that this case may, this case remains in existence until that indictment is brought here, and then the Commonwealth will move to dismiss this one and substitute the new one in. That's correct. So we have no And, no and my, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, okay. I believe that it will be reassigned or continue to be in your courtroom, Judge. Okay. Doesn't matter. Either way, son. How about May 15th? Say it again, please, ma'am. May, May 15th. 15th. May 15th? No objection. What time? 1 o'clock. Will you do now, a favor, Mr. Adams? Will you let me know if it gets indicted? So, we're gonna have to yeah, orders. I was going to say, if it gets indicted and, and you are ready to just dewalk this, if one of you could submit an order dewalking and remanding this okay. case from that date, that would be great. Need a number? Right. What time did you say? Oh, they're 1 o'clock. 1 p.m., thank you. Let me just say that again. Mr. Corbin is coming in from Luther Luckett. If this case, 24CR136, is going to be dewalked 
and the other case is not set for May 15th, then please you will submit an agreed order dewapping and remanding the OPA for May 15th. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mountain Peaks, excuse me. Yes, have a good day. Thanks. I had texted the lawyers and said, hey, you might want to try to get some consent with their price. Oh, no problem. It happens two, three times a year. Thank you. All right, I don't see Miss Hannah. Mr. Cunningham, have you seen the attorneys for Mr. Rose? No, I haven't, Your Honor. Well, that's not good. It was on for one o'clock. Oh, did you? Yes. Okay, well, good. That makes me feel better then. I've got to leave at 2.30. 12.45. Okay. All right, I literally have not left this bench today. I'm taking a five-minute break. <laughs>
Angel Rosario. Oh, yeah. And she wanted to know if she needed to file some kind of paperwork to get him out or if there was something. And I said, well, come on up. It's Rocket Docket. That's before I knew. That's before I knew. Yeah. Well, actually, I ran the dockets on Courtneth, which I kind of do at the last minute to see if anything's been added. I said, oh, She said he was in. Yeah, because the last time it was on, we wrote dates and follow up because we weren't sure where he was going. And she was wondering if she needed some kind of an order to get him somewhere. Yeah, because he hasn't found a placement. Right. As of right. a month ago. Right. And I don't know if there is a placement. Or That's concerning. The yeah. Okay. I mean, I would have thought that. Emails would have been flying between her and Saint. Uh, what do we need we'll to just do? tell her. As, we just tell her. I looked at the file, and as far as I can tell, he is waiting on an order for placement.
if he doesn't need that, he's been diverted. We can release him. You want me to just roll it? Judge, I'm fine. If you want to roll it, I mean, I'll hang out until he gets here for a new day. Let's do this. Um, I don't know how long this is going to take. So if you want to sit here for a while and see if he shows up, that's fine. But if it gets to where you can't keep waiting and you leave, I'll just assume it's on next week. Okay. If you want to wait, would you mind calling me if we're going to do it after this? I'm just going to put the file over here. And um, if you all come back, great. If you don't, I'll just roll it to next week. Thank you, Judge. Janelle and Brenda, I just switched the screen. Is that better? Yes, it is. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, but you, I managed to break my foot in uh, January. That was no fun at all. When I broke it, I heard it break. That was oh. not a sound. I did not like that sound at all. Mm. It was real loud, too. Yikes. Yeah. Don't I, need to hear any more about that. <laughs> it's I, making me crazy. I sat on my foot while I ate lunch, stood up, my foot was asleep, took one, took one step, it went sideways, and I heard it go... Oh, it's terrible. This is going to change my life. Every time <laughs> my foot falls asleep, it was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> and then I got stuck at the hospital, and I couldn't get a ride home. Oh, no. Because it was the, the one oh, day of the right. year that it snowed. Yeah. Um, and uh, Uber said, we're not going to drive because it's snowing, which is like the day they should be driving. Yeah. So I had to start calling. It was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I start calling, cold calling friends. Oh, my god! You know, who's a real friend who'll right. come pick you up? And no one, no one, oh, was, no. Pick, no one was picking up. And so they, they said, we arranged a ride for you. And I said, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that hospital's going to get you out of there. No, and do you know who it was? Police. A police car shows up to give me a ride home. And the, the officer, who's real nice, said, you got to sit in the back. So I got to sit behind in the cage in the back. Wow. I drove to my, all my neighbors are waving, you know, as I pull in in a police car. And then he said, he turns to me because he doesn't know who I am. He said, he said, you'll have to wait because there's no handles in the back. I said, I know, I know you, you can't just let yourself out of the back of the police car. Yeah. That is funny. I should have had him take one. And I was in shorts. It was still snowing. I was in shorts. Yeah. Neighbors left in the street. Not my favorite day. So they turned it on the spare. I don't know, two months maybe. All right, are you guys ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right, listen to Mr. Rose. I hate all these hires and then Jeep. Worships and they don't have any three tires. Like back there, you get three. All right, this is sixteen CR one eight nine one Commonwealth versus Bryce Rhodes. Appearances for the Commonwealth, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Elizabeth Jones Brown for Cunningham for the Commonwealth with Detective Aaron Tonelli from LAPD. Thank you. And for the defense, Ty Howard on behalf of Bryce Rhodes. And Tom Griffiths on behalf of Bryce Rhodes. Thank you all, and good afternoon, Mr. Rhodes, to you. We are on for sentencing today. A pre sentence investigation report has been filed. Have you all had a chance to review that? Yes, Judge. And are there any changes or corrections that need to be noted? No, Your Honor. 
Thank you. All right. Um, is there anything that you would like to present before the court imposes sentence? We have no evidence to put on today, Judge. My understanding is that the Commonwealth has evidence, and we did want to make a brief statement to the court at the conclusion. Okay. Um, that would be out of typical order. Do you have any objection to proceeding that way? That's right, Your Honor. We All just right. have two victim impact statements. All right. Thank you. You may proceed, Mr. Hector. Your Honor, the Commonwealth calls to Chastity Jones. Thank you. Um, now, Ms. Jones, you can... Um, come up here to the witness stand or you can come to the podium, whichever you prefer and feel more, feel more comfortable with, okay? Thank you, Yana. My name is Chastity Stoner. <clears throat> I am the mother of Christopher Jones, Jr. Christopher's, uh, was my son's dad. Uh, first, I want to just thank the court for this opportunity. I also want to, um, this has been crazy. This has been painful for me and my family. Um, but it, what, it, what it has not done, it has not took uh, my son down a path of destruction. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, I would love for the sentence to be upheld because what he did is just unthinkable. No one should have to do that. On the behalf of my son and my family, we forgive but we forgive for ourselves. We don't forgive for him. We don't feel like he's remorseful or anything like that. But I do want the court to just uphill, you know, all the sentences. And I appreciate this. Um, I'm kind of nervous right now. It's fine. Because, I understand um, that. It's hurtful. <clears throat> My son turned 18 two days before his dad would have turned uh, 48. He turned 18 years old. This happened when my son was 10. He just, you just took him from my son's life. But we've persevered through some things. I'm super proud of my son, and I'm going to call that out right now because my son got us um, an offer from the University of Louisville, so he's going to play football. All right. So this man did not take that away from him, but he did take his dad. His dad didn't see his 18th birthday. He'll be graduating May the 25th from DuPont Manual. His dad won't be there to see that. So I just wanted the court to take all of that in consideration. What he left, he left another son behind, Byron. He left a sister, a brother behind. And for that, it angers me that somebody can just take a life. Two brothers, that's, that, that angers me, you know? So I just uh, thank you for this opportunity. And yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. Well, I um, appreciate you being here so much. Does yeah. the defense have any questions for her? No, Your Honor. Ms. Jones, do any questions? No. All right. Um, you are rightfully very proud of your son. Please pass along to him that I'll be keeping my eyes out for him. Thanks. And I'm also very proud of him. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. Thank you. Anyone else for the Commonwealth? Yes, we call Jackie for tea. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, I've been waiting seven years, seven long years for this. This day, that trial on December the eighth. I mean, the, the on December the eighteenth, when they found Bryce Rose guilty. Miss Jones was looking down. It made three years for that lady's death. But she was looking down on her baby to see for justice for him. And she got it. And we all got it that day. And just to be clear, you're talking about Christopher's mom, right? Yes, I'm talking about Christopher's mother. Yes. And uh, for that mother to say, uh, the, the that, that mother, Mr. Jones's baby's mama's, her son is playing football Little Larry played football, and uh, he didn't get the chance to finish. Little Reese wanted music, and he took that from them. 14 and 16 years old, you know, I sat in this courtroom and listened to everything. 
even to the corner, what something I had kept playing in my mind all along. But the corner confirmed it. But when one point, that one point that he did to my grandkids, it, it just took me right there. How you just mutilated them like an animal. You know, and, and then throw white castle boxes all around them. Just like they were trash. They wasn't trash. They was a human beings. And they loved life. Little Larry and, them, and little Reese, they, they was good boys. Very good boys. They went to school. Everything. You know, it's just, I just can't understand why and how he can just take Mr. Jones's life. A man walking down the street and just take his life like it's nothing. You know, but uh, God say vengeance is man's, who says the Lord. Because, you know, I, I do go to church. I'm in church. I've been in church all my life. And that's where I raised my kids in, church. But I do want to say this. I would like to have a copy of his uh, medical records over across the bridge and over here too for my son little Larry Nim's dead little Larry's dad is going through this really hard cause he's not here to help wasn't here to protect his own child because of another judge in Christian County wasn't here to protect his child Neither one of his children. But you know, the things that I wanted to say to uh, Mr. Rose, it was somebody in my house that knew him. In school, in school. And I, this, came, this came about. And this man told me that he knew him while they was in school said he was a, a nicest guy, quiet, played football, and he just couldn't believe the way he turned out. And you know, and and I just I was just stunned when this guy told me this. I didn't even know this guy. He was doing some work. And and it just came about. But I do hope he finds, so you can find the Lord in, in anywhere, anywhere. And I hope he do find Jesus while he's back in, while he's in, in the uh, prison and, and not in jail. It's a difference. But I don't know, you know. I don't know, but I just do. I just know for little Larry and little Reese, not to be here. When little Larry was born, I was there when little Larry was born. Weighed seven pounds and eleven ounces, and not to even there to protect my own baby, my babies. But I don't know. There are, there are not perfect words for this situation. I think that you've done a great job of speaking for Larry and Maurice, and I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the witness? No, Judge. Thank you. Any other witnesses for the No, Your Honor. Mr. Griffiths. Judge, given the trial, that we all were present for, that we all sat through and we all did our job. Uh, we understand the court doesn't really have discretion to do, uh, to deviate from the jury's verdict in a situation like this. The jury handed down a sentence and we understand the court is going to impose that sentence. We do believe that um, 
by operation of law that those sentences should run concurrent, we would ask the court to impose them concurrently. And we do intend to file an appeal in this case. And that's our statement for the court. Thank you. Ms. Jones-Brown, does the Commonwealth um, wish to have any response in regards to the request that the sentences run concurrently by law? Uh, Judge, I think that's the way the law works, uh, but we would ask the court to follow the, um, the recommendation of the jury as to each count of murder being life without the possibility of parole. I think they will merge into a concurrent sentence, um, but nevertheless, he will not be eligible for parole. I know everybody here remembers the whole trial and, and knows why that is appropriate, and we would ask the court to follow that. All right. Um, the attorneys are correct that the court does not have um, discretion to run these sentences anything but concurrent. The, the reason for that is um, multiple, but, but particularly because in Kentucky, uh, a life sentence without the opportunity of probation or parole really means that and um, and so obviously you know you can't have life upon life upon life there's only one life here we're talking about and that's Mr. Rhodes life um, I, I, I will tell you all that uh, this has been by far one of the most tragic cases I've ever been involved in um, and uh, as someone who has um, represented many people charged with murder myself uh, and having been involved in a lot of tragic cases this one is it really stands out for how profoundly sad it is on every level um, you know with Mr. Jones it's just the fact that it wasn't even the right person that, that they thought they were looking for uh, is so profoundly sad. Um, with Maurice and Larry, there, you know, the fact that they were so young is so sad. It's so sad that the police had to resort to sending out sketches before anyone realized that they were gone and identified them. That is tragic. Tragic. And that deserves being said. Everything about this case is horrific. And when I came on the bench, it was very important to me to get this case tried, to get a resolution for everyone on both sides. It needed to be done. And I, um, I am satisfied that it is done and it is over and that justice has been served and that the jury was in the absolute best position to determine what the appropriate sentence should be. Uh, and that this jury worked very hard and very emotionally to, to come to what they felt was a just verdict. I believe it would be a dishonor to change that in any way. Uh, and so the court will follow the recommendation of the jury in line with the law and impose a sentence of life without parole. Is there anything else for today? All right, thank you all. Sure. On or off record? Okay. Go on white noise.